<laughs> Airbnb beds, never know what you're gonna get. So let's do this part two of the Egypt guide. <laughs> it has been, uh, wow, over a year now. A lot of stuff has happened since then and I've been meaning to get this video out to you guys. So I am sorry for the wait, but uh, let's get on with it. I'm the mad traveler. I am traveling the world and this is my adventure. And I just watched my uh, part one guide video. So I'm gonna follow that. We just finished the pyramids. And now let's talk about all the other things in Cairo or some of the other big attractions that you're going to go to. Now before I go on to that, I just wanna say that the first video tells you everything you need to see in Cairo. I mean, the pyramids are it, to be honest. And they are so much better than everything else that you don't need to see anything else. Everything else is just going to pale in comparison to it. So I'm gonna kind of breeze through the other ones and not spend as uh, much time on them as I did with the pyramids. Then after that, I will, I will tell you kind of what it's like to be in the city, I suppose, and uh, what happened when I went to some of the non-touristy areas and took photos of something I apparently wasn't supposed to and how to take taxis and things like that. So the one good thing about seeing sites other than the pyramids in Cairo uh, is that there aren't going to be so many, if any, bakshish ghosts. You're almost going to feel free, like this weight has been lifted off your shoulders. You are not, in my experience, I think I spent a total of maybe 14 days in Cairo, going to have people grabbing you, unless you piss off a secret police, which I'll talk about at the end, or harassing you so much. But let's talk about some of the things. I got a little list here so I don't forget anything. Cairo Museum. That is uh, one of the things that's on the top of all the lists to go to, so you go there. And it was right near where I was staying, in Tahrir Square. Uh, but it's just a huge letdown. It's the, it's the biggest letdown every uh, of any of the attractions there. It is like a giant warehouse just full of randomly assembled ancient Egyptian artifacts. I mean, it's like the people that put them there don't, don't have any idea where they came from or what they're doing. I just looked old. I'm just going to put it in a museum. And the funny thing about it is that it's got so much cool stuff. So much cool stuff. It's just, it's not organized properly. When I was there in 2016, it's not organized properly. It's just piles and piles and piles and piles. You don't really know what the hell you're looking at. And yeah, it is cool, right? It's cool for the first 2,000 granite weird sphinx statues that you see. To be fair, the, the cool part of it was to go and see the King Tut, the King Tut exhibition where they um, don't let you take photos unless you bribe them or you're quick about it. That was really cool. But the rest of it was just kind of like a depot, like a warehouse for ancient Egyptian stuff. It ended up being the most boring museum with the largest number of really cool things in it. So if you are an Egyptian, ancient Egyptian, just nut fanatic, you will feel like you're in heaven. If you're a regular person like me going there with moderate interest in it, mainly to see the pyramids, um, you're, you're just going to be overwhelmed. So after you know a little bit, it'll be kind of annoying. Oh, and the funny thing is you have to pay to take photos. <laughs> so you pay to get in and then you pay to take photos. So you can't take photos of the cool stuff like kinked up, right? But you have to pay, you get a little slip and they really do check you. They come up and they ask to see your little photo ticket. So it's kind of a weird feeling having to pay twice. Um, but do pay for the ticket. Uh, let's see. Oh, the other thing they don't tell you about is all of the uh, military you have to go through to get into the museum. Yeah, it's kind of interesting going through the barbed wire and machine guns and everything. But, you know, that's Cairo. It's just Cairo. I didn't talk about that that much in the first video because I think I was worried about droning on. Not so worried about that anymore. <laughs> but the city is heavily militarized. Let's talk about Zamalek. I wasn't really going to cover it, but everyone talks about this place because it's the rich neighborhood. It's an island in the middle of the Nile, or big one, uh, in Cairo that um, it's where all the cool stuff is. Uh, apparently, I mean, the cool, like, cafes and restaurants and all that jazz. And uh, they have embassies there. Be careful if you get lost there. So I walked there, staying near Tahrir Square, across the bridge. 
don't really know where I am, ended up on what turned out to be the wrong side of a European embassy. So it's not very comforting to turn around and see 10 to 15 heavily armed men wearing bulletproof vests and body armor and machine guns just looking at you on their walkie talkies, you know, wondering what the hell this guy's doing. And I guess since I had a coat, they thought I was going to blow myself up, which is just lovely. Just lovely. Somebody thought I was going to do that there because I walked down the wrong street. So you feel very safe. <laughs> but once I got reoriented in the center of this nice, lovely island, it's such a, a beautiful, lovely place. It must be like a really ritzy high street in London or some nice place to go. But what you have to remember is you're still in Cairo. You're still in Cairo. Everything is covered with dust or sand. The sidewalks just don't really exist in a lot of the places. It, it just looks like a bunch of landmines blew them up, basically. And um, it's just, <laughs> it's not at all what you're promised, basically. And it turns out that there's a reason for this. Okay, they have all the nice things there, but what the rich people do, what the rich locals do, is they go from their mansion to their Mercedes, to their destination. They're not walking there, they're not walking around, and they don't care about the sidewalks or the streets because they're driving over them. And they're very nice cars that handle the bumps very well. So they go there, they get out, and they get into their nice restaurant. I went to one, so nice, overlooked the Nile, the, one of the nice viewpoints of the Nile, very few and far between in Cairo, and it was just so peaceful and so relaxed and so air-conditioned. Such a nice place to be in Cairo. But the second you walk out the front door, you're back in the hellhole. So that's how it works, okay? <laughs> so don't think that you're going to uh, an oasis, which actually, I've got a great video on the oasis coming up. All right, on to the third thing. And the second coolest thing, the coolest thing after the pyramids, I thought, in the entire city. And I love medieval stuff and fortresses. So they had a citadel in the city. And it's on a hill, and you go inside, and it overlooks the city. It gives you a great, amazing view of the city. And it's got uh, lots of structures inside of it, and it's got a few mosques. One doesn't really matter. The other one is the Muhammad Ali Mosque, which is just so cool and big and amazing. And you go through gates to get into the fortress, and it's just a really cool medieval-feeling experience. So if you go to Cairo, definitely have to go here. There were no Bakshish ghosts. How awesome is that? No bakshish ghosts. But don't worry, they're still a scam. You don't need bakshish ghosts for that. We're still in Egypt, we're still in Cairo. So how it worked here was I paid for the ticket with a 200 Egyptian pound note. And I know inflation has been crazy in Egypt, so any prices I give you in Egyptian pounds are gonna be way off now. But I gave him a 200 uh, Egyptian pound note for the ticket. And he quickly swapped out a 100 pound note. So he gave me changes if I had given him 100 pounds. So I put the two in, okay? And it's hot as hell outside. You're sweating. You're in a place you don't know where you are. You're not paying a complete attention. You're sure you gave him the 200. But then what he did, I'm certain this is what it was, is he did with the tables here, he just flipped it, and then he held up, and he showed me, this is your money. And I said, okay, I guess it is. Didn't pay much attention, then I got back my change, and I'm thinking I was supposed to get 130 or 150 back, whatever it was, and I only got the 30 or the 50 back. Son of a bitch! Ripped me off from 100 Egyptian pounds! Right there! And there's nothing I can do about it, he's behind glass! There's tons of security everywhere who work for him, or with him, who probably get a cut of what he just took. So that's lovely. Finally, no Bakshi's ghost, an asshole that works there, rips me off. Great, thank you, Egypt! When I left, though, this was the coolest experience, is there were not that many foreigners in Egypt when I was there, and there probably still aren't now. All of the Europeans that say they go to Egypt, they go to uh, Sharm el Sheikh or Dahab or uh, that other place that I forgot, uh, Hagoda or something like that on the left. So they don't actually go to real Egypt. <laughs> All these Dutchies just go and sit on the beach. So when you're in Cairo, you stand out. And there was a group of kids there, and as uh, I made a friend in there, as a Japanese dude, and as we're walking out, the kids kind of were sneaking photos of us, and I just walked up and I said, do you want, want, want to get a photo? And they screamed, they were about between 8 and 15, I think, a school group of maybe 50 or 60 of them just surrounded us. 
<laughs> and took turns taking selfies with us and everyone had to get a photo and even the cool kids in the back you thought weren't going to do anything they just waited for the little kids to get out and then came up and like yeah man photo and it was, it was the funniest craziest thing ever to feel like a celebrity it, it was really fun to feel like a celebrity for about five minutes i wouldn't want it any more than that um, but it was just crazy and uh, they were taking photos of us because they didn't see people like us and uh, that, was, that was a cool experience. After that we went to, um, oh this is a good tip by the way, when you're at touristy areas you need to always be careful uh, if people want something from you or want to give you advice or tips because for instance in Greater Cairo you're not going to encounter this but right in this big touristy area outside the citadel one exit there was a taxi cab driver and we uh, asked him to drive us somewhere that turns out would have only been a 30 minute walk but we didn't know that and he wanted to charge us 40 egyptian pounds which is insane insane it should have been five egyptian pounds for the taxi but he wouldn't do it and we said to him we said dude listen we're the only two foreigners here we just spent 40 minutes in there we know no one else is in there just give us this ride for the right price and then you can come back here, and maybe by then someone else will be there and you can scam them, but we're not paying 40. He wouldn't do it. So anyway, we went down to a little minivan, and they had these little minivans and their group uh, ticket things. And I think we paid 100% um, too much for each ticket, but that 100% too much ended up being like £2.50. So I think each of us paid £5 instead of paying £2.50 or £2.50 instead of £1.25, something like that. But that uh, was a funny experience. They don't drive you directly there. He drove us all around the city before he took us to the place where we could have walked faster. <laughs> we started to get a little nervous if we were actually going to make it where we were supposed to be. But, uh, okay, now I'm blathering. But anyway, just be careful. And before I got into the Citadel, by the way, somebody told me it was closed. I came in on the, the opposite side where there's no entrance. He said, it's closed. You can't get in. You have to go over here. And I let him talk for about five minutes because I wanted to kind of hear his scam. But his scam was basically he was going to be his tour guide to take you in the other place and charge you money. So remember, if a local tries to give you advice on a place is closed, never ever believe them, okay? <laughs> Especially if you're right next to that tourist place. It's a scam. Let's go to the Alazar Park. Everyone talks about going to this park. And my first note on this park, I love this, from a year ago, year and a half ago, is it's a park. Yeah. Uh, this is the big park, it's nice, it's beautiful, it's on an old trash pile, <laughs> but you don't know that when you go there. And it's right across from the Citadel, so it's high up in the city, it gives you an amazing view. You can get the biggest ice cream, like, uh, what do I call it, ice cream sundae, ice cream smoothie sundae thing that I've ever seen in my life. I think it was five or seven or eight Egyptian pounds, and me and the Belgian dude I was with, uh, we shared it, and just sitting there in this idyllic, I, ugh, idyllic setting. I can't speak, can I? It's a beautiful setting, okay? That overlooked the city and the green grass and we had shade and the waiters were dressed like like five-star waiters from some western country. I mean, the other half in Egypt lives amazingly well. It's not the other half, it's like the other 0001%. They live amazingly well. You know, the air conditioning blowing out, it was great. So, uh, that's nice. If you're in the city and you're dying of heat, which you probably will be, go to the Al Azhar Park for a little break, cost a few pounds to get in, and uh, go to the only restaurant there, have the ice cream smoothie, then leave, because there's nothing else to do there. But if you do leave there, and uh, you go towards the citadel, there's a cemetery. This is actually cool. Okay, you probably won't go to the cemetery, but I'm going to tell you about it. It's so cool. So we're walking along the highway, don't know where we are. Me and this Belgian dude, who's very well traveled, so I felt comfortable, I had a good travel companion for once. And we're looking over and we see just what looks like a city, of like an old western city that had all their roofs ripped off the homes. You had four walls and a door or a gate, but no roof on any of them. For hundreds of these little square things, you can see them from above. We were maybe 20, you know, 40, uh, 20 meters, 60 feet above, looking down. And I'm not sure what the hell it is. We walk down more and more and more. We see a dead dog. We smell the dead dog first. Then we see it. It's a horrible smell. And then we're just walking through a freaking ghost town. The cemetery next to the park, it, it looks like a legit ghost town. It's the coolest thing ever. But the sun starts to go down. We start to get a little nervous. It's, there's red arrows all over the place. I think it was to commemorate someone who was important and died during the uprisings. I'm not sure. But it kind of freaked us out a little bit. 
following these arrows, like what are we going to find at the end of it? Turns out that near the end of it, what we found was a homeless guy, <laughs> or actually, no, he had a home. He kind of commandeered one of those, those uh, I guess, burial sites. And the, the, the little home things were burial sites, apparently. And he kind of commandeered one and made a shack next to it. It looked kind of like some sort of, I don't know, pirate boat shack. And he'd just taken a bunch of trash and clothes and wheelchairs and stuff and made this hut. And I mean, it looked like a crazy homeless dude lived there that just sort of haunted the cemetery at night. And then he had a fire burning with, of course, burning plastic, which is just a putrid smell. But thank God it covered up the smell of the dead dog. And um, <laughs> so we're walking through here. It just becomes more and more terrifying the darker it gets. And finally, we end up getting out, getting out of there. The cemetery is right between the Citadel and the Alazir Park. And then um, you have those two things, the cemetery. And then we just walked back to Tahrir Square, which was a good walk, but not, not that bad. And then in between up here is where you have the, I guess this whole area is called the Islamic Quarter. But there you have the bazaar, and you have sort of the cool old streets. It's right next to the Al Azhar Mosque, on the same side of the street. Actually, that's helpful. But that's also where we had some sketchy encounters of being followed down some of the side streets. So you know, watch yourself. Um, <laughs> I'm a little bit ca more cavalier about these things now that I've traveled uh, more since my visit to Egypt. It's a really cool area. You can take lots of photos. We got street food there. We had a great time there. But if you do go to this, this area, stick to the touristy streets. Be careful when you get off on some of the side streets. Not when you're in the bazaar itself, but when you're kind of in the vicinity. Because when we went onto the side streets, the tone changes immediately. On the street, all the sellers are there to sell stuff to tourists, so they want to rip you off, so everything is really nice. and tourist friendly and we ended up, we didn't want to do that so we went to a little lo local market area and we were just, we were told no photos, no video and then we were told we had to leave and we weren't doing any photos or videos and then three or four guys followed us for about five blocks and it was a very, let's just say not friendly feeling. <laughs> so I can say, and at the time the Belgian guy was better traveled than I was. And uh, he, yeah, he was as well incredibly uncomfortable. So needless to say, we didn't venture off the tourist track in that particular area again. The bazaar is cool. It is cool. Everything you buy there is a ripoff. Haggle, haggle, haggle. Get the price down and then just don't buy it because you're going to get ripped off anyway. But there are some really cool places to have some tea and sit and chill inside the bazaar. So if you want, go ahead and do that. But you really have to be careful of pickpockets. No bakshish ghosts, so that's nice. But pickpockets, yeah, worry about that. Okay, I did not go to the Coptic Cairo. Didn't seem so particularly special, to be honest with you. Basically, what I would do is if you're in Tahrir Square, skip Zamalek, don't even go there. If you're in Zar Tahrir Square, walk all the way to the Islamic area. So walk to Al Azir Park, walk to the Citadel. You're gonna encounter all of these things because here's Tahrir Square, Here's Al-Azir Park, here's the Citadel, here's the Creepy Cemetery, which is kind of fun to go through. Here is the uh, area that's not the bazaar, but really cool in the Islamic area, right next to Al-Azir Park, right next to the Al-Azhar Mosque. And then across a big street right over here is the bazaar itself. So all of these things are really close together, but it's difficult to walk between them actually, because you're going to walk along the highway, or you're going to walk down these side streets. So try and take a taxi or take a minibus. Do the minibus thing like we did. So when you get ripped off, you only get ripped off two or three pounds instead of 45 pounds, Egyptian pounds. Um, and like I said, prices will be different now due <laughs> to lovely inflation. Um, so, all right, good. I did that. Now let's cover the fun stuff. So I went and I saw the tourist attractions, uh, of the big ones that seemed interesting, in Cairo, but I wanted to get a feel for the city. So I was there for a solid two weeks, maybe a little more uh, than 14 days. And I made a point of, from Tahrir Square, instead of taking a left towards all those wonderful things I just told you about, uh, taking a right and going down there. This was actually my first day where I was searching for a beautiful part of the Nile. The whole world knows about the Nile. <laughs> and you think it's gonna be amazing or wonderful, kind of like uh, um, a Western European city along the river, maybe, 
even like the Seine in Paris, you know, how they have those wonderful walkways along the water and even though Paris is really smelly, at least it looks nice, okay? But no, <laughs> it's just a disaster zone. The Nile is just a disaster zone there. I guess it makes sense since all through history it flooded every year and they didn't have a way to control it until they built the dam in Aswan, but it's, uh, it's just not lovely, it's not nice, and a lot of places there isn't anywhere to walk really, and it's kind of next to this highway, and it's just unpleasant. Um, so the Nile at this point was very disappointing. It gets better when you leave uh, Cairo, but, but uh, Nile is just a big disappointment. So lower your hopes for that, okay? And the best way to experience it actually is to go to one of those rich person restaurants in Zamalek. Uh, and there you sit on the, the Nile, a very quiet, peaceful area. But otherwise, it's just full of trash and sunken tour boats. <laughs> I mean, it's really... So, I don't think I talked much about this, but Luxor was just the bane of my existence. I've never been to a city that had cooler stuff, but just made you never want to go back due to the Bakshish ghosts. And Cairo, since it has, I guess, over 20 million people during the day in the greater Cairo area, most of the people don't make their money off tourism. So once you leave the touristy areas, you're pretty much left alone. And people are actually, generally, helpful and nice. I was lost on the metro one day. Metro doesn't go too many places, but I took it after my bus from the Oasis dropped me off in the middle of nowhere. And so I took the metro and I was totally lost. I think three or four people helped me out and they were so lovely and helpful. You know, and so I had such a good time um, with the regular people. And one of my good friends, who I met originally in Montenegro, when she showed me around, she's such a nice person. And everyone I met through her, and when I was hanging out with her, just really nice people. So the people who aren't involved in tourism are great, in my experience, except for anybody who works at a government institution, or is the secret police. Because the funny thing is that bribes are a way of life there. And especially after the... Um, what was it after the revolution and all the stuff that had happened uh, basically what I heard is the bribing got way worse it, it was a part of life before that and now it's a requirement for life a requirement for doing anything when I was on my camel tour going into the pyramids uh, the guy that I was with it was just me and this tour guy just us two he didn't bribe the uh, police guy at the entrance to the pyramids enough money so they wouldn't let us in and then he told him because the guy told me this afterwards, uh, what had happened. He told me, he said, no, listen, this is all that I'm supposed to give you. I gave you everything I'm supposed to give you. We're, you know, we're sitting on camels. He's looking down. So let us in. He's like, no, 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 no. So we had to call his boss. who had to come all the way over. He rode on a horse and, um, and uh, passed the, the, he rode a horse past the dead horse in the garbage that was being eaten by the goats that were later slaughtered and sold at the meat stores next to the pyramids, by the way. And so he rides his horse there, and he talks to him, and he had to give him more money. So we had to bribe him more to let us through. Then we get through. Then the second set of security guards didn't know that we had already sufficiently bribed the first set. So he stops us and starts yelling, and then my guy's like, no, we already bribed him. We bribed him twice. He's over there, blah, blah, blah. So then he goes and checks and says, okay, everything good, good. I mean, <laughs> so he, it's just ridiculous. Oh, he also, he also gave him, you can call it a bribe, you can call it a tip. Let's go with a tip. Tip's a nice way to say it. Give him a tip on the way out as well. A, a, a not required, but requested tip. I love, I love how they put that. Except for the government people, everyone basically leaves you alone. You have a really nice and lovely experience. It, it's, 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 it's great. You know, and the guy that was making donkey noises at me out in front of the hostel, that was creepy. But uh, he was wearing a gray tunic, so maybe he was a former Bakshish ghost, reliving his old days of harassing foreigners. Um, <laughs> but, so the local people had a you know had a great time with them and the food. Oh my god! Oh my god! All right, I gotta not. I, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna. Okay, stay on topic. All right. Uh, be careful where you take photos outside of tourist areas. This is important. So when I went to Wander to find a beautiful part of the Nile, I'm taking photos like crazy. Uh, I mean, one of the interesting things, which I'd never seen before, except for maybe in a movie, was the big hotels where you're gonna stay if you take a group tour. They have huge walls around them and armored personnel carriers, APCs outside of them with 50 caliber machine guns on top and the guys there. And then guys with machine guns on the ground, military style. They probably were the military. And um, bomb sniffing dogs. 
in their, at the entrances to these hotels. And I didn't overtly take any photos of that, but I, I found that to be just so, like, what the hell? Where am I? <laughs> Where am I? And the walls, not only around the hotels, but also around the embassies, were curved like this on the street, so that if a car bomb, I believe this is why, blows up, it doesn't just go up and maybe into the building over there where the target was, it'll go like this and go Phew. Of course, it'll hit the building on the other side of the street and all the people that are over there. So that's nice when you're walking alongside those. Um, so all of the uh, big hotels, heavily fortified, lovely, makes you feel nice and safe, doesn't it? Um, but I uh, and I leave that area and I find a nice, honest, real local market. Not this bull crap made for tourists. A real one. And I was so excited to be there, except for everybody was looking at me like I shouldn't be there. It was really kind of a creepy feeling. But I'm in there and I'm trying to slyly take photos, just like, hi, hi. Like, I'm not hiding it. My camera is orange, you know, but I'm also not trying to be like an annoying tourist and put it in people's faces. Uh, and it turns out when I took a photo of the whole street, so you could kind of see everything, there was a building in back of it that might have been the, uh, some sort of bank building. So what I was told, don't really know. And so this big, fat, disgusting police guy. And in Egypt and Cairo especially, they have police on almost every corner, almost every block. Uh, especially if you include the secret police in that calculation there, there. So they know everything that happens. And there was, uh, so this guy stops me, and he starts saying something to me to look at my camera, and I said, sorry man, I don't understand. And I had the camera tied around my wrist, so he tried to pull the camera away from me, and I said, I can't, I can't, it's attached, it, it won't come off. So he's just like, ah, whatever. And then he calls over his buddies, and there's three or four of them, they ask him where I'm from and what is my name, and then uh, they ask for my identification. One of the few countries where I actually carried my passport around when I was walking, and it was good in this case. I show them my passport, I tell them my name, they hear that I don't have an accent, and uh, then they just kind of start laughing. And it was like, well, I guess, what do we do? And, and, and I'm kind of nervous at this point. Like, some really bad stuff happened before I got there, and uh, even to foreigners. And so I just decided to slowly start backing away as they were talking. <laughs> oh, they made me delete the photos. Yeah, so I had to delete the photos. And then he tries to take the camera again and like, attach my wrist. I just slowly start backing away. Then turn around and start walking away. <laughs> I don't do anything. It was, oh, it was like the Three Stooges when they play a uh, policeman. Yeah, funny thing about that is the building that was supposed to be so super protected, I accidentally walked through their security zone earlier. Uh, and was in their secure area because I thought that it was a shortcut. <laughs> I walked right past their security. I don't know, I guess I looked like I knew what I was doing. <laughs> so they just let me in, didn't search me even though they searched everyone else. And then I walked right out the other way. <laughs> so, very secure. Yeah, be careful of those photos. You don't want a photo out there when you let the person who can't take a photo actually walk into the building without searching them. Um, but after the security guys in the photo, bear with me, I'm going back to that. I'm walking away slowly. A uh, secret uh, police guy followed me. So he followed me for about 20 minutes or so, which is rather unnerving, I have to say, especially when you know the things that went on in that country, especially in the 2015, 2016 time. And uh, I know he was following me because there was no one else on any of the streets where I was. It was midday, and I, I made a habit of, how can I show you? So I walked like this, and down like this, then over like this, then up like this, for a block. So each square is a huge giant block in Cairo, and then up like that. And there's no one else on the sidewalks anywhere in the streets, just me and him. And he followed me the whole way. I kept looking back the whole way. And that's when I started to get pretty nervous, because I'm only a couple kilometers about uh, one point uh, was it, two miles from my hostel. I don't want this guy to know where I live or where I'm staying. And so what I did is I walked through a, an incredibly busy little like mini bus station where all those little tiny buses I told you about earlier, uh, minivans are. And I walked through there and I just sort of tried to lose him and I ended up losing him. So he wasn't following me anymore after I went in there. 
But my gosh, what the hell, Cairo? And everyone else just puts up their beautiful photos of Cairo and says it acts like it's just a regular city. Regular city, my ass. Regular city, my ass. What the hell? There was a Canadian couple staying in my hostel, and they um, they were they were staying temporarily at a friend's apartment. So I, I met them before, and they left and came back. And in the lobby, inside, behind closed doors, in front of an elevator, he kissed her good night. And a secret policeman, just a little peck on the cheek, nothing inappropriate. The secret policeman saw him do that from the outside, come storming in, calls the other people. There ends up being like, what do you say, four secret policemen and three uniformed policemen interrogating them for 30 minutes. And he just gives her a kiss before she gets on the elevator. And he's inside of the building when he does it, not in public or not outside the building. How nice is that? Is that where you want to be? All right, stay on topic. Get your emotions out of it. Got a little heated there. I think I already covered, did I already cover taxis? Uh, taxis, uh, you can take taxis. You're gonna have to take them in the city if you wanna go any distance. Well, I mean, I walk almost everywhere. We only took a taxi once, except for the pyramid tour. Uh, only took a taxi we got on the street once. It took two or three taxis before we got a good price, but there wasn't any real problem with it. You just say, I'm going here, how much is it? And if he doesn't use the meter, don't use him. If he does use the meter, just be careful and watch it. Taxis are really cheap in the city. Never take a set price. It's always going to be bull crap. Um, I think it took us three taxis to get a good one, but it wasn't a problem. Make sure you have small money. Always make sure you have small money. You don't want to get cheated like I did at the Citadel when he replaced my 200 with a 100 uh, in taxis, of course. Um, but now I want to talk about food. So I love lamb. If you love lamb, you're going to love food in Egypt. Oh my gosh. Actually, now that I think about it, I don't know if I was eating lamb or trash goats from the street. <laughs> no, there was a place that had delivery. And after walking through the city all day, they don't have as many kind of uh, fast food snacking places dispersed all throughout the city. It's not like Tokyo where there's a 7-Eleven on every block so you just get a little snack when you're hungry. So I'd come home famished and uh, at the end of the day go to my hostel which was so cool. It's on the top of the building, no roof, open air, great breeze, really cool interesting people. When you go to more, let's call them interesting countries, you get more interesting travelers to hang out with. And so uh, there was a place nearby and I, and I would order delivery every night and get the most expensive item on the menu. I think it was like seven dollars. It was a massive meal. And what it was is it was an aluminum uh, container like this and maybe that thick filled with rice pilaf on the bottom and then some sort of like pita chips on top. But the pita chips had become semi uh, soft because it had a huge hunk of lamb. like lamb with a bone still in it, medieval style, like Schweinshexe, mid pork knuckle, medieval style, with the, just the fat dripping off of it, and dripping all through the pita chips and the rice. And it was just the best thing ever. I have a video of it, I've got to put it online. I mean, <laughs> that was after the pyramids, it's probably my most positive experience in Egypt. It was just so, not that Egypt was that bad, it's just that the food was so good. It was amazing. I had many more lamb dishes. Stay away from the pizza. Watch my fake pizza in Egypt video. Stay away from the pizza. Even if you're craving it, after three weeks there, stay away from it. <laughs> but the lamb is so good. And I went to a, a local restaurant my friend took me to. It had all these local Egyptian dishes I never heard of. And hell, I can't even explain. It seemed like half of them were made with some sort of bean, though. And it was just so fun, interesting, great, and lovely. And and there's so many hidden gems in Cairo that you're not going to find from talking to me or looking up online. You just need someone who lives in Cairo to take you to. And I'm very pleased that I had someone to do that. And the food. Mm, I love Egyptian food. Um, so let's see. What else is there? Wow, there's so much more to talk about. So much more to talk about. Uh, 
But I, I don't want to blather on too much more right now. The next one I'm going to talk about, it'll be a much shorter video, I promise. Kairos is the biggest one, you know, I have to talk the most about that. Oh, I didn't even talk about all the security on the street that points machine guns at you when you go through their checkpoints. Yeah, on your way to the pyramids, if you're in a taxi and not a tourist bus, you've never had more machine guns pointed at you in your life. I mean, I don't know too much about guns, but I know that when you hold them as a security guard, you shouldn't point them at the taxi with your finger on the trigger. I'm thinking you shouldn't. So, yeah, very disconcerting. I feel like if one of them just sneezes, it's going to set everything off. But anyway, next time I'm going to cover the Oasis. The Oasis is, uh, <laughs> oh, it's not exactly what you would uh, expect when you picture an Oasis. Let's put it that way. My gosh, do I talk too much? Maybe. I hope you guys liked the video. Don't forget to leave your comments in the section below and give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And subscribe and hit the notifications button so you can see all the new videos. There's a lot more adventure to come.